Hello friends, welcome to IBM Integration Buzz tutorial series. In my earlier videos, I have explained how you can download for free of charge in a legitimate way from IBM uh, websites and install instruction step by step in the video tutorials. And I give a little bit introduction about what this product is all about and navigation about this IBM Integration Toolkit. Today I'll create our first project and I'll mostly explore the message flow or palette, uh, what are the different primitive or not available. And in the later tutorial, I will explain how we can execute it and test it step by step. So we, we can create, uh, a, today let us create a new application. We can create it in three different manner. One by clicking over this new, and one is clicking over here in the application. Another one is to click file new and this application. So all will do this exactly the same thing. So let us create a new. So uh, I given the name as uh, Hello World application. So let me finish it. So a very simple folder is created. There is nothing else there. So there is a you know section for creating a new. So let us create a new. So this is the artifact. So we can create several different kind of artifacts. Okay, I'll go one by one slowly. But uh, for now, we'll create a message flow. Message flow is is kind of a one diagram representation of various component. Okay, here we can wire different component and we can drag and drop. So this is not exactly the individual or a very basic code base to write, but this is the beginning point we can say, right? So message flow, oh, first message flow. Uh, in, in the later period of time, we can try to give a little bit better naming convention. So the naming convention, there is no hard and fast rule, but uh, you, you just use very simple, don't use spaces and other sort of things and other character as long as you are sticking to alphabetical character and caps log, it should be well and good. So you can, as per your uh, company or project, you can define your own naming convention and uh, follow it. So we can, so we got it. <clears throat> so in the right hand side, this is the message flow editor is open and here we have a graph representation and user defined properties. Okay, so below are already I explained, let me minimize it. So this is my palette and we can I think, uh, I just want to maximize it because I don't want to see the display left hand. So only the whole window will be only visible for this message flow. So whichever the way you like, you can keep it open and it is up to you. Okay, so this is the editor, all the functionality is available over here. So for example, if you want to integrate with MQ, but uh, this particular IBM integration bus doesn't come as a prerequisite of MQ, but all of the previous version MQ was embedded and in almost all the project, MQ was one of the mandatory uh, for the design solution, right? Not mandatory, but it is used widely in whatever this integration bus is used. But uh, we can definitely use it. So for example, we can drag and drop here, it is very simple, okay. And we'll uh, show in uh, some example uh, how uh, we can configure it. So if you double click, it will be, you know, minimize, maximize is happening. So here, which of the outline we have created, right, we can just uh, <clears throat> click on that maximize so it will display over here. So here, see, there are three nodes we have created. So MQ input, and if you click on the properties <clears throat> specific to each uh, node, the property will be different. So if you see, uh, uh, don't worry, the, today I'm just explaining about very high level, just to make you yourself familiar with what you can expect in the future tutorial. When I create an individual tutorial series for MQ, I'll explain what this all properties mean. But you can um, play around. <clears throat> so you can just uh, delete it by pressing the delete key. You can just simple, this is a graphical way of developing any solution. Okay, this is not the editor where most of the time you'll spend on writing the code in a, you know, a text pair or kind of a simple editor. This is a graphical, right? So here we can just wire it. Okay, just simply creating wires. So from one point to another. So what does it mean? Well, there are a lot of uh, constraint restrictions which you can map and uh, I'll explain a little bit slowly. Okay, now coming, if you click over here, we can specify, you know, connection. So this is a specific meaning as per which particular, you know, uh, node you have chosen. 
So you have to little bit understand about the MQ, what does it mean by cube manager, what does it mean by host or IP, so which will vary from one to another. So <clears throat> there are different uh, description. This description is quite uh, simple in English vocabulary, English uh, statement. You can give any name over here. So by default MQ reply, you can change it to MQ receive uh, input node. So it can give some description if any other developer read it so they can get a feeling. So you can say account ID will be received over here. So you can give a little bit more description so it would be you know recommended or best practice to give as much a description so that people will by reading it they will get a information that who is sending the message, who is the consumer, uh, what are the mandatory field, what are the required field. Any, any specific thing you did in the advance or anything you can just uh, pre flow text you can type it so this is the change so this a uh, lot of thing you can do uh, the MQ part so whenever I will create some tutorial I will explain in detail about it so what does each and every mean so let me minimize over this two panel okay so properties will be very essential Okay, mostly you'll uh, work in the this editor and the properties. Okay, nothing else. So this outline is a just for display purpose, nothing else. But uh, most of the time you'll work on this uh, node only in the properties. And in the left hand side also, you uh, no need to worry too much about it. Okay. So after MQ, this is a uh, publish and subscribe model. So because in MQ there are two concepts. One is queue queuing. Another one is uh, publish subscriber. Usually this is one to many, that is one to point to point communication. I'll create uh, some uh, dedicated tutorial for MQ. So I'll cover basic, what is MQ is all about, how to install it. I think some trial version will be available over the internet. So I'll go through them. So JMS is also related to MQ, but this is slightly uh, different. This is the standard, okay? This is a JavaScript messaging system. Using it, you not only can connect to MQ, but also you can connect to all the open source. For example, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, TIPCOMQ. So it is a Java uh, standard because IP mitigation will use the Java runtime to integrate uh, with a, any queuing mechanism. But the concepts are more or less same. Here also you have input, output, receive, so queuing, okay, so mechanism. So I will create a dedicated tutorial for, uh, and I will also create a tutorial for uh, explaining about the difference between MQ and JMS a little bit elaborately, where you can choose it, what is the benefit and pros uh, about both the things, okay. So now let's moving. This is a HTTP node, HTTP like a web service, if you click over here, we can give the path. This is the path, uh, this is where uh, hosting and creating a server is very extremely simple. Once you give a path, so anybody from outside, either use a Chrome browser or any uh, utility, or you can give it to somebody else once you deploy the server so that they can create. This is a kind of creating a web server and give a path by yourself, this uh, account new. So if you create a new, so if you pass the information, so they can able to create a new and the logic you can implement after once you get the hit the call. And there are uh, different different nodes you can see. So they are for the different timeout. One would be this first one would be for the let's say failure and other thing. There are each node will have a different nodes. This is case, this is timeout, this is out. Out means if it is normal, if it is successful, you have to map it to one to another, right? But if it is uh, out uh, or if it is time failure, so it will come here. If it is timeout, it will come here. So catch to you can catch the exception if there is anything bad happen. So this is about HTTP node. It is very trouble, basic. It will do all the uh, stuff with respect to. So REST also is a, is a, is the enhancement of HTTP. Under the hood, it is using HTTP or HTTPS protocol, but it, which will give a little bit more control in terms of creating API very uh, easily. And it will help us to create Swagger document. This is a open source or a lot of, uh, a lot of big companies are collaborating together to publish a well-defined structure, how we can write documentation, how we can, you know, um, publish or subscribe to API. So it is a set of best practices or set of guidelines how we can create a document or a REST JSON format. I will create another separate tutorial which will only discuss about Swagger. But the uh, the point over here is that this IBM integer symbols is supported that standard to create REST API. Swagger is a standard across the board, a lot of open source community using it. 
so we can create so here it is select the swagger document if the document is already created by swagger so they're given a one more id so we can use it or we can configure this manually whatever maybe you like so here the request not if you don't know uh, we can create our own rest api is very manual so here's the swagger document file we can give the attachment over here we can browse and create it it will pop up the operation so request response parameter we can define over here so so i'll explore in detail okay one by one each and everything so don't get that overwhelming of the information i am flowing around here so once i give testing once i develop slowly one by one i'll cover in the future this is just for today i want to give an overview so that you're familiar this web service in in the last decade it was quite popular almost all the communication happened through SOAP, which is a web service standard which is purely xml based and it has a lot of different technology for example wsdl uh, schema accessed file then swap messages then whatnot it is a bit complicated and rest but i'll explain you in detail about all this technology so that because till now today a lot of enterprise system are heavily reliant on this SOAP. all people didn't migrate to http so SOAP is more powerful it gives a robust security mechanism it, it passes different mechanism for passing attachment so and a, a proper well-defined schema structure uh, so it is very nice for a lot of tooling to support it so it is very consistent across a lot of application so just to because till now if you see mainframe systems are there so SOAP is not going to be uh, you know just thrown away but maybe after 10 20 years SOAP you may not find it or maybe down the line five years but now it is very much used across the board a lot of web service call are still using SOAP so I'll discuss in detail about them so registry uh, and is also one important concept because there are a lot of product for example WSSR uh, SSR web whisper registry product because it was uh, it is one part of governance where inside your enterprise you may have thousand web services how you know which one you need it or how you can maintain SLA or authentication or editing purpose so there are a couple of other software where you can just keep track of it it is a kind of folder structure in a uh, different with different uh, enhanced manner so where you can store all the web services publishes about the so that you can control who can access and how many requests they can send per minute or second so that is known as registry and using this uh, primitives you can look up those registry and you can get the access and you can do that okay okay this SCA is a service component architecture okay in earlier before this IBM uh, uh, integration bus there is a one tool which was used by various client that is known as IBM ESB IBM Int uh, enterprise service bus and IBM web Software process server those services use SCA binding. SCA is not only proprietary to IBM, but it is a uh, standard which is used by Oracle and all other middleware platform to give a service oriented architecture component. You may have heard about SOA in the from 2005 to you know on the last decade. Nowadays, I think there is no too much buzz about it, but at some time it was really popular. So this is a specification to interacting with those SOA based services. And also these web sphere adapters are coming from uh, use in uh, ESP solution integration designer. So using this adapter, uh, IBM created a lot of, uh, of built-in plugins. So very easily by giving their host name, port name, so and some kind of component file. You can, you know, uh, you can pass their messages and you can integrate with the people sort very easily. So you can integrate with SAP, you can integrate with Siebel and Edward JD Edward. This is one more different CRM. So, oh well, I will try, because it would be difficult to show me example because I probably uh, I don't have the installation of people shop, SAP or Civil that will be different. But I may touch upon some theoretical part or explain you in detail about what are the thing you can do. But the live demo may not be feasible uh, uh, in my scope of tutorial series. Okay, so about the routing see routing means let's say i got a http request and we have some kind of city city for example new york chicago and we, if it is chicago we want to direct to another application if it is new york we want to call another application in that case we can use route 
and the uh, we can use filter means uh, different methods we can uh, you know put some condition uh, based on some condition we want to execute certain thing or not so this aggregate collector is used for parallel invocation and uh, you know uh, in this flow it is just one to one we can execute parallelly multiple if we have an array and if you want to call parallelly a various system so these are little bit advanced concept I'll, uh, this kind of thing I also in my future demo so here it is a very robust support to dotnet connectors so you can if you develop any code base in microsoft dotnet so you can definitely integrate very quickly so again some dotnet compute node so this compute node is where you actually write your program for example this is input node and uh, this is output node and inside that you can put either this uh, dotnet compute node okay or you can put this mapping and uh, that is uh, i think auto layout would be there uh, this would be layout left to right okay so it will align uh, by itself or you can just align by drag and dropping if you want to you know no problem if you use dotnet compute node you can write your own program in dotnet if you prefer to so if you want to write your uh, transformation logic in java you can do that as well so this mapping is a graphical interface you can create it graphical way so and you can just drag and drop using the mapping so i'll you can create some object because i didn't define an object so you won't see but it is a graphical way this mapping is concept is come from the ibm esp world so they merged it so that's the where it is and xslt transformation also we can use this is as per standard i'll touch upon because earlier xml was very popular now it is also xml lot of application you will notice it so this is also one way for transformation xml style sheet right so using they have a its own set of languages its own primitive to do date uh, formatting to do any string manipulation substring concatenation it is a different language altogether it is a style language these are known as markup languages and uh, we can use computer here we can write the mockly esql code so we can write our programming for doing transformation any kind of uh, data transformation okay so in construction these are the input output node and we have some kind of error handling or flow control so these are the exception handling i'll explain in detail so these are the very basic thing and we'll see that okay callable uh, flow means it will allow you you us to invoke another node another services okay if you do uh, this callable input in some place it which will allow you us to call by another service in some place of the you know our flow so let me lay out it left to right i think they all merged up but anyway you can play around because we didn't did mapping so salesforce request also we can do and this loopback is another framework okay so this is uh, used by node.js framework okay i think this is a loop sorry i think this is loopback i have to see it i'll come back again because yeah i think that's what i'm correctly referring there is a framework in the node.js by name is uh, loopback but I, i'll double confirm on this okay but no no one need to worry i'll create a tutorial on that so here we can use database node for integrating with the database file so email tcp ip corpora we can create rules if this is for mainframe this is for mainframe we can do validation we can security we have so there are tons of tons of tons of things available inside this integration bus i don't want to go in this fashion so i'll create several kind of tutorials slowly one by one one by one so that you will get a better understanding about this particular software and you can leverage as for your need okay so thanks for watching my videos if you like it kindly like and kindly you know subscribe my videos to encourage me to create more of this kind of videos if it is helpful because if you like it if you leave comment or if you subscribe it will give me an indication that you enjoy watching my videos so which will help me to motivate and to create further kind of this kind of videos so definitely do that Thanks very much again and have a wonderful day ahead bye bye